What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Greg Campy Show. We're live at RJ's Club in Rochester Hills. He is a coach, Greg Campy. My name is Neil Rule. Happy to have you all with us. Remember, you can get involved with the show. Send us a tweet with the hashtag Ask Campy. We ask Camp all the questions that gather there, and uh, we get into it. But Camp, uh, pretty good weekend there. Yeah, we had a pretty good week. The Fort Wayne game was gnawing at me for a long time, and got a chance to go there and, and you know I was I'm really concerned about them because as I've said to you I've mispronounced the word half the time but they're the antithesis I see you're getting it I'm getting better with yeah, the antithesis of ours against our zone because they're they play positionless they're not big they're little they they not only can they shoot it they can drive it and uh you know but my staff did an unbelievable job preparing for that game I think when you get slapped the way we got slapped way back in December and, uh, um, you know, to, to prepare for them and what they did to us in December and come out and, and hold them to 62 points in their building. Uh, just an unbelievable job by my staff. Now the players obviously bought into what we wanted to do. And, and we've said all along, I know Smitty says this more than I do. And I think he's spot on that. Uh, I don't coach other people's teams. He says that to me a lot in the pregame. Yeah, no. Uh, he he says this group of kids is probably the best that he's had in his coaching career at uh, pre- preparation, at, you know, doing the, you know, we can do all the things we want to do. We can give them all, this, all the film to watch, all the scout, you know, paper after paper to read, tidbit after tidbit to, to take into the game. And, and most games, when we play, when you play zone like we play, most scouts are not what the other team does. It's more personnel. So let's take Fort Wayne, you know, Jackson, number one. Yeah, he can shoot the three, but his, his, he's going to take it. And if he goes right, he's going all the way to the rim. And if he goes left, he's going to two hand or uh, come to a two footed stop shot fake and try and get back to his right hand and score at the rim. And so as you prepare for every player, just reading it and looking at it, doesn't mean that that's going to kick in when the game's going on because there's so many possessions and so many guys with the ball. Is that number one? Is that number three? What? So our kids have done an unbelievable job game after game of understanding personnel. And we call it a, a, a personnel scout more than a team scout. Fort Wayne was a little different because they ran some stuff we hadn't seen much before because of, they're all outside guys, you know, and, so we were prepared better this time. And again, the last time we played Xavier on Monday, Detroit on Wednesday, and, you know, we had a one day scout this time we had a week scout and a week, not week as in not strong, but a week as in time as in seven days. Yes. To prepare for them. And again, Smitty and Cub and Bobby just did an unbelievable job of getting a group of kids ready. And, and you could tell they were frustrated. They made, their run, but their run was really fueled off bad offense on our part. We turned over five out of seven times once we were up 13 or 14 or 15 or whatever it was. And, you know, so to, and then to, to take that and Goki hit a tr- big three and DQ hit some big shots and, you know, Lampman was hurt and gutted it out and he made a big shot and, and we got to win. And so I felt really, really good about that. And then obviously Saturday was a trap game. We were playing a team that's, you know, probably not very talented at, at the level that you need to be in the horizon league, which is why the record is what it is. Uh, but they, they've won at Fort Wayne. They've got, they've played other teams. They went to Wright state. And I think that was a three or four point game with a couple minutes to go. And we showed them that. And we let them know that if you mess around, you're going to find out, right. They're going to beat you. And uh, I think the saying's a little different than a, a little yeah, different. We, get, we, we get where you're going at. And uh, you know, Smitty, Smitty, there's a, speaking of that, there's a little chart that a guy has on the bottom says around and on the other side of the chart is find out and Smitty put that to all the players and uh, we didn't mess around. And the, I really thought being a trap game and, and how well we've played and coming off of that Northern Kentucky at Wright State at Fort Wayne, that it was going to be a struggle and that, you know, the game we, we talked on the bench about it. We thought the game would end up being like a 65 to 45, 50 game that would be close. And then hopefully we pull away at the end. Never in my wildest dreams that I think we'd have a 50 point lead. I mean, I, 
I remember once we went to UMKC when Reggie Hamilton was on the team and he was going home for the first time and he, and we were had 50 to 15 at halftime. Uh, but other, I don't ever remember being up 50 points in a conference game before. So you really have to, yes, they didn't, the other opponent didn't play well, but I mean, we, we were magnificent Saturday, just magnificent. And the, the play of the game for me was Jack Golke came out, made his first four threes and everything was going great. And we got the ball in the far right corner in the first half in front of IUPUI's bench. It swung the Golke at the top of the key and he was open four for four and he caught the ball and without even thinking he whipped it over to Ose who made a three. And the fact that Jack, you know, he sh probably should have shot it because he was four for four and he would have ended up with 11 if he had, but he gave that up for even a better shot. And we're seeing that game after game now. And we're also seeing our offense becoming, we're now ranked in the top hundred in the country in offense, which as good as we are defensively, that's why we're winning. I mean, we're doing both now. Absolutely. Remember, you can involve with the Greg Campy Show. Send a tweet with the hashtag Ask Campy. Third segment, we get to those in the Greg Campy Show. It's brought to you by Henry Ford Sports Medicine, the official team physicians for Oakland University and you. For more info, visit henryford.com backslash athlete. Uh, Camp, I want to go back to something you said where you, you talked about IUPUI and how they got a win at Fort Wayne. It, explain that because I, I think, you know, a lot of times we, we think, you know, linear right i.e you guys beat purdue fort wayne how could iupui win at fort wayne I, explain that camp how, how how come you see such variance from time to time and, and i know the answer to it but you know, what's your take on it well every college basketball game is different and to be honest the the thing that makes it uh Andre Polk is here. Oh, there yeah, you are. Absolutely. I didn't recognize you with your glasses on, man. I, I'm, I'm all worried you're not. Okay, good. <laughs> I can settle down now. I was like, where the hell is this kid? Yeah. Um, <laughs> every game's different. And it really is determined by how well somebody shoots the ball. It really is. And it's like Saturday, we looked like the greatest offensive team in the country. And wow, what good offense they're running. Look at the ball move. When it goes in, you forget about, you know, some of the bad things that happen in your offenses or you don't, you know, again, the education of the fan of seeing why this guy got open and maybe somebody missed a screen or didn't do their job. You don't, you just, fandom doesn't see that. And so when the ball's going in, anybody's good. And, and if they're, a, if they're a division one athlete that's on a scholarship, they can shoot the ball, maybe not the level of goalkeeper, but they can have games like that. And so uh, uh, an IUPUI goes to Fort Wayne and they're making everything and Fort Wayne's not. And then you get nervous and you're not supposed to lose that game. And then you start the pressure hits you and bam, the next thing, you know, I mean, Ohio state beat Purdue yesterday. How in the hell can that happen? Right. I mean, if they play 10 times, Purdue's going to win nine of them. Well, mess around and find out. Right. Well, and it's I mean, wild. It's, too. They were 20 for 20 from the free throw line and still lost the game. You know, Purdue, it, it is, it's in college basketball is incredible. Like that. It's, it's just, I mean, you, you can look all over the country fans. They look at their own team and, and they, Oh, how did this happen to us? And eh, we do this all. Everybody does that. It's not just your team. It's everybody. Everybody blows 15 point leads. Everybody, you know, nobody is perfect out there because they're 18 to 23 year old kids. And it's all de dependent on every day is different. And that's why in a league like the horizon league, if we could finish this and I shouldn't even say this, but if we could, if we could win out and finish 16 and four with a league that is so even, you know, there, there shouldn't be any team in our league 16 and four because the level of talent is so even. But if we do it, it's because of how mentally strong and how deep our team is. Because there's – do we have the best starting five in the league? No. We do not have the best starting five in the league. And I, our, our kids know that. I mean, but we have the best team in the league. At least we do right now, right? And that's what you want to be. And so every game is different. And they don't – if you think that Detroit couldn't beat us next Saturday, you're wrong. If you think that Robert Morris can't beat us Thursday, you're wrong. And if it happens and, oh, they choked, they, no, they didn't. We didn't choke. It was just one of those nights that Robert Morris played great. You know, the ball went in for him in that. So you have to come every night. You have to stay focused. You have to take them one at a time. And 
one of the things I'm doing a lot with our team is using Michigan's football team. Because if you look at Michigan's football team this year, they're the epitome of playing one game at a time and overcoming adversity. And you can say, how does a team that was 15 and all, is that what they were? 14, 15 and all overcome adversity. Well, their coach isn't there for eight games. They're, they're, you know, they're being accused of things there. And those kids kept it together and they had to go play at Penn state. And then before the Ohio state game, they had to play their Robert Morris game. Right. And they found a way to win it. They didn't play extremely well, but they found who I think I can't remember who it was. Maryland. Maryland, right. They had to win that game and they did. And, and if we're going to win a championship, we have to beat Robert Morris at Robert Morris. And if there's no way it's going to be easy, we're going to have to compete and refuse to lose. And if we do, then we got two home games to win a championship. So it's just, we, it's hard to understand that as fans because you're so wrapped up in it. You're so bought into it. This is our team. This is, we want this. And we get disappointed because it's, you know, it's hard. It's hard to win. Well, Camp, it, it's funny you bring that up because that was my thought process during the Purdue-Fort Wayne game. When we got up 15 in the second half, I, I knew it was coming at some point. Like, you you just know. You you know that they're going to make a push, and, and I didn't expect them to come back, you know, be up by four. And us, you know, really – because I, I thought that was a – if you want to talk about what's different about this team this year, to me, just just from what I've seen, Camp, you talked about mental defense. Even losing a 15-point lead – being down four with four minutes to go, uh, with them having the ball too, Purdue Fort Wayne, with a chance to to improve upon that lead, I never got the sense that this team was rattled, was worried, was scared, anything about that. It was all right. Let's get this stop, and then when we get the ball back, let's get a bucket and then get a stop. Like it was, it was very business like, Cam. And Lampin stepped up and made a guy's hurt. I shouldn't have had him in the game. He's dead tired. He played 37 minutes on one leg. And he stepped up and made a three. And then I called a timeout. And a lot of people would say, well, why, don't, why didn't you call a timeout when they were on the 19 or whatever run? Because I don't do that. Um, I called a timeout with, you know, just at eight, any timeout between 8.30 and 8 would be used as the media. So I called it at maybe 8.35. So we would get, because it's the first time out of the second half, we would get a full two minutes and then 30 seconds later, we're going to get another full two minutes. And so that's a way to rest like when he's hurt. And to me, that use of that timeout is way more important than that. And uh, DQ stepped up and made one. And then Joe Polk, he made the one. We were up two and it put us up five with 45 seconds going. It was a hard three he made it. But yeah. he, it was new. He wanted it. There was no question he was going to make it. And uh, I don't think anybody on our team, when he shot it, he even thought he wasn't going to make it. And that's... You're right. That's the difference, the mental toughness of this team. And, you know, it, it's why I was so upset at the Northern Kentucky game, because it's the only game this year that I felt down the stretch. There are two games down the stretch that we, sh- we should have won the game and we did. One was Ohio State. And I think that was more that it was Ohio State. It was the first game of the year and we didn't realize how good we were. And, you know, we dropped the ball out of bounds down we actually got fouled and should have been shooting two free throws to go up one but we dropped the ball out of bounds and they made a three on the inbounds play to you know to go up four with a minute to go where it should have been our ball down one that game and then the the you know we it wasn't mental toughness as much as it was stupidity at the uh yes i did just call it stupid um just uh, we we did some not real smart things in the last minute and a half of that and we didn't understand we got this game one we got the ball so what they're going to score a lot, you know, we just made a mistake. And the guy that did it was, I mean, he was in the locker room apologizing before I even got in there, you know, and, and that's another great sign with this team is boy, we're smart and we understand. And, and uh, we've got great leadership on this. Blake Lampman, you know, I've always said that I thought the the probably the greatest leader that I ever coached was Drew Valentine. And I, I think that Blake is every bit as good, if not better as a leader. I mean, you can't say somebody's better or not, but, they're up in that stratosphere, and Blake Lampman's up there. I mean, it's he's, he's unbelievable as a leader with this group. Uh, and, and obviously, too, you're talking about Jack Golke. It was uh, learned, we learned today he has been named the Horizon League Player of the Week, the third different Golden Grizzly to be named Horizon League Player of the Week this season. Well, if 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 he wasn't named, it would there'd have to be an investigation. <laughs> what would you have to do to be Player of the Week if he wasn't? <laughs> uh, 
Camp, you guys have won six of the, of the last seven coming down the stretch uh, here in February. Uh, and before we cut to the break, I mean, your teams in February, uh, we talk about it a lot. The resume bears it out. The numbers bear it out. Why does it work in February, typically under a Greg Campy team? Well, you know, to be honest with you, we weren't very good the last two years in February, so I'm not taking any of the credit for it. You know, three years ago, I would have said we're always good in February, but the last two years been kind of abysmal in February. So this is this, these are these kids. And again, I go back to my staff. I think my, I say I always gets the credit for it. And a lot of times the head coach has, or the head of that organization has absolutely nothing to do with other than hiring the people and saying, do it, you know, and our game preparation, I stick my nose in there. They probably don't like it when I do, but my staff is in charge of that game preparation. And, and if you were to watch us practice, I don't, you know, a lot of head coaches, everything is, you know, it's, it's scripted out and you're going to do this and he, and they'll meet with their staff and say this, this, and this, we probably meet less than any staff in the country. And part of that is that I think that we enable them, but I trust them too. And they, they're unbelievable at game preparation. They're unbelievable at understanding the nuances of our zone and what it takes to play our zone and how do you win offensively? I don't give them much. I like to hear their, I like to hear their opinions but on the offensive side, I hoard that. I don't want anybody bugging me with that, you know, um, what plays to call and things like that. But I will tell you, there's been many, many times that, that Jeff Smith would whisper in my ear, why, how about this play? And I'll run it and it works and then I'll take credit for it, right? Right. <laughs> but uh, what's the problem? Yes, exactly. So again, I go back to that game preparation. We, our staff, and, and that's probably why everybody, we're so close as a team. And, and I mean, did you watch us on the floor Saturday that, I mean, I, I don't know if I, I've had a lot of great players go off in games, right. But watching Goki go off, it was more fun watching our bench yeah. than it was yeah. that making the shots. I mean, I was watching our bench cause I could, you know, they come to the timeout they're they're wiping and down, you know, I've never seen anything like that before. It was, it was to me, exactly. And, and, I'm having as much fun as I've ever had coaching a team because of them. And, uh, you know, so it's, it's all fun and games right now. And we mess around and find out Thursday, though, it won't be fun in the game, right? So we, we've got to stay focused. All right. We will take our first break. We come back. I'll be joined by Andre Polk. We're live. This is the Greg Camp Show at RJ's Pub in Rochester Hills. And just to have some Oh, you cool with that? Well, we've got a point. Copy. Yeah. 
Welcome back to the Greg and Campy Show live at RJ's Pub in Rochester Hills. My name is Neil Rule, the voice of the Golden Grizzlies. And remember, the Greg Campy Show is brought to you by the Pino Insurance Agency, LLC of Mimic Insurance. They cater to the educational market. If you're looking for affordable insurance and a knowledgeable insurance agency, go online to pinoinsurance.com today. P I N O insurance. Dot com today. Right now, as promised, we're joined by Andre Polk here at RJ's Pub. And Andre, appreciate you taking some time here. And uh, you know, before we get into your story a little bit, now, now certainly your your season has had some twists and turns, and, and your career has had some twists and turns and stuff like that. But you know, as you as you hear Coach Campy talk about this basketball team, and, and we're up here chopping it up about this basketball team, you agree with that? With what Camp said, why, why is this team so mentally strong? Um, uh, one reason I say we're meant to be strong is because how close we are. You know, Coach Campy, he does a good job of saying that every day when we got practice coming up before the game. You know, he acknowledges the fact that we're so close with each other and that does allow us to trust each other on the court. You know, when we got a game in a situation that gives us a chance to trust, trust each other. Absolutely. Well, the Red Wings just won, by the way. A little afternoon hockey game uh, in overtime. So they, they're staying in, in the playoff mix. No, but, but Andre, uh, you First off, let's let's get into your season a little bit. Now you came out, you played ten games this year, and I, obviously you you've had some some injury situations that, that we're going to get into greater detail. And you know, as as the season went on, uh, you know, through the camp portion of it, then moving into the season, just kind of you know your impression of how things went for you. I know I know it was pretty choppy for you. Um, I definitely say it was tough. Yeah. It was definitely because I didn't have the chance to have the summer session like the rest of the guys did. Right. You know, probably, so you're already playing from behind the eight ball. Though. Yeah, exactly. So when we went to Italy in August, I probably had four or five practices under my belt with the team in total. So it was a tough challenge. Then coming back after that, it was just hard getting in shape. You know, in my body, I've been sitting for about five, six months. So I really had to get back in shape and try my best to catch up with the team. So all that was a challenge. But... Every day I just went out there and I tried my best to just push through it and get to what I could do. No, absolutely. And, and certainly, Andre, I guess that is the biggest challenge, right? Because you're you're playing from behind. you you got to get in shape, as you said. So it's one thing to deal with the practice element of it. But then after practice is over, you got to catch up and do the extra work to get back to where everybody else is. So I imagine it's a big challenge. How, how do you keep that going? Uh, I mean, I just try my best. And with the injuries, you know, it's definitely a, an even harder obstacle because, you know, getting in shape got to do running and everything and then when you got a new problem battle and that it's harder to go back to the gym and be able to push through and do everything you can so it's pretty much just while we in practice you know i just go hard as i can at every rep 100 percent speed and just try to get what i can take from it while so andre uh just for the people that don't know uh obviously you you originally were at central michigan university a member of the mac all freshman team during your time there uh transferred here from garden city community college just just take us through your path uh to oakland university um, like you said, I spent two years at Central Michigan, and I say my first year there it was a pretty good year for me. Like I said, I was on a Mac freshman team, so that was a really big year, and I fractured my fibula that year, and I missed the second half of the season. So that year went the way it did. And then the second year, new tra- new coaching staff, everything changed. So it was a bit different for me, and I tore my meniscus that year in January as well. So that cut short my uh, my season that year. And then going JUCO last year, it was – it wasn't as hard as it was at Division One because, you know, although I have been sitting with an injury, the competition style, I was already up there with them guys. So just hitting the court, it was a little bit easier. But once again, battling the knee, you know, that was like come out there some right. days, practicing some days and sitting out, you know, what I'm going to get out of it. But coming to Oakland, it was something that was pretty much set in play before I got to Juco. You know, I wanted to come here before. So there was some academic issues. So I really went down there to get that straightened out and then. Yeah. I had to say about October, I think I was committed here. So. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, Coach Campy and I were talking, and, and you and I, before we went on the air here, uh, You speaking of that, the injury situation, uh, you have a surgery schedule that's coming up pretty soon. What, what what are you looking at getting done there and kind of the timeline of getting back and all of that? Uh, I have multiple labral tears in my left shoulder as well as a partially torn rotator cuff. So they're going to take care of the labral tear. They're just going to leave a rotator cuff alone. And I, they said that heal on its own. But I'm looking at six months out, so I think I'll be back again by September. So it'll be kind of the same thing I went through with this past year. Well, I guess, I mean, you got experience, right? Like, Definitely. <laughs> that that is back. a boost. That is a boost. Let's talk with Andre Polk here on the Greg Campy Show. We're live at RJ's Pub in Rochester Hills. What about what about Andre Polk off the floor? Um, Because you, you're you're a quiet dude. Like, when, when we're traveling and stuff like that, I don't hear you saying too much. You know what I'm saying? 
Oh yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's nice. Um, so yeah, you know, like you're 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 kind of a quiet dude as, as far as like when we're traveling and you know, I, we, when you hear you kind of hear the usual guys cutting up. You know what I'm saying? You're you're not you're not one of those vocal dudes, but you know, just what what's Andre Polk like? Uh, I mean, you say I'm not a vocal dude, but I think if the rest of the team had to say it, I think I would be the most vocal dude out there. Okay. I'm, pretty, I'm a funny guy. You know, I try to be funny. And one thing about it is dealing with the injury. So when I'm outside of the court, I have to give myself another reason to be happy. So I try to make everybody else laugh, and I basically find myself laughing with them in the midst of that. So when we on the road, I might seem quiet, but when I'm with the guys, I'm definitely the talk of the show. Well, I'm saying because you're like – you're. In- Know, up up at the front, but you're but you're in there stirring it up. Yeah, I'm, I'm stirring it up. I keep it. I keep it cord. <laughs> <laughs> keep it cord. I, I like that. I like that. Joined by Andre Polk here on the Greg Campy Show. This is a question that I ask everybody that that comes on here. Uh, the, the, this the limit for this team, the ceiling for this team. I mean, we, we've seen it time and time again. We saw it at the beginning of the year. Um, you know, at some point you go through a little bit of adversity in a season, but you guys obviously have a role in how far can this team go? I think we can go far in the tournament. You know, I definitely think we can make the NCAA tournament and get a few rounds in it. You know, I know Coach Campy, that's one of his goals before he get out of here. So I think this is definitely the team that maybe that had a chance to take his product to the Sweet 16. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, we, we mentioned earlier uh, you, you came here from Garden City uh, Community College, which obviously Bobby Nauber, who is an assistant coach here at Oakland, he was there as well. Um, Bobby, like his coaching style, just kind of his style of person. You know, he's he's got a ton of energy. He's a lot of fun. You know, what, what what's he meant, you know, to you as you've been able to work with him now for a couple of years? Uh, Bobby, he's meant a lot to me personally because he was me getting the central. He was a big help with the coaching staff, with Coach Schmidt, and them getting me the central before he left. So going to Juco and going to Garden with him, it was pretty much him. He was kind of the reason that I went down. And I knew I could trust him, and I knew I would be able to get the work I needed to get back to Division One. So even with coming to Oakland, I didn't know. He was coming to Oakland, and I was working the camp. And I seen a guy working. I was after the camp, and I was looking in the stands, and I seen a guy that looked like Bobby. And I was like, wow, he looked familiar. And he looked at me, and I was like, Bobby? And that's when he came with me and told me, like, you know, I got the job. So when he let me know that I was super excited to know he got the job, and Boo was also coming here with me. So. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're we're happy you guys are all here, and, and certainly we wish you good luck with the upcoming surgery. And one thing that I've learned about you, Andre, is it's not going to stop you, man. Like it's it's just another minor setback. Definitely. You'll put the work in, and you'll be back, right? Definitely. It's the I've been in college for four years, so each year has been an injury. So it's always about just the work, getting back on the court, and just finding my rhythm and getting back to it. Absolutely, man. I can tell. I can tell by the look in your eye, man. You'll be back, and certainly we will see you back there as well. But in the meantime, enjoy the ride this year, right? Thank you. Gotcha. Uh, absolutely. Andre Polk, everybody here of the Oakland Golden Grizzlies. When we come back, we'll get you those questions from Twitter. That's right. It's the Ask Campy portion of the show. Fire off those tweets. If you have something you want to ask Campy, feel free. He answers all of them. The good, the bad, the ugly, all of it. We'll be back with more. The Greg Campy Show live from RJ's Pub in Rochester Hills.
Gampy Show. We're live at RJ's Pub in Rochester. Hills. Here's your coach, Greg Gampy. My name is Neil Rule. Happy to have you with us. And remember that the Greg Gampy Show is brought to you in part by Farmer Owned Prairie Farms, celebrating 85 years of feeding American families. And by popular demand, Prairie Farms. Happy cows, real milk. There you go. People always ask about the happy cows. So we, we had to let them know that the cows are still happy. Uh, Camp, you ready to answer some questions? I'm happy. All right. <laughs> well, let's do it then. Uh, Marty, Pittsburgh Marty, uh, kicking off. We'll see Pittsburgh Marty coming up uh, this week as a matter. Can I have lunch with him on Thursday before the game? Absolutely. Uh, Marty says, uh, Shona's girls basketball team and I are looking forward to seeing you on Thursday at RMU. Question for the week. If you had two recruiting wishes this offseason, what type of players would you want and why? Well, what type of players is, would be identical to what we have as far as commitment, uh, type of people they are, and with mental toughness and would fit in with this group? This is a unique group, and, you know, we're going to lose some players, and, and can we plug back in the same type of commitment? To I mean, you know, Goki's making shots, but, man, there, there's nobody, well, maybe just Lampman that have worked harder than he has, you know, and they just have a great work ethic. So we want that. We want to keep that. And when you're good, you can do that in recruiting. When you're trying to become good, it's hard to do that because you've got to get good to in attract those type of, of uh, young men. So, and then we need a point guard, uh, probably two. You know, we've, we've got two or three scholarships left available. Uh, we don't, you know, who knows what's going to happen when this is over. Uh, the way the portal works, the way college basketball is today, we might need seven players next year. Who knows? Uh, I don't worry about that stuff anymore. I'm just worried about this team and getting to it, the end of it, and then figuring it out. But we definitely we need a couple point guards. And then, you know, a lot depends on Andre and, and the uh, and the injury because we, we need rim protection. We're recruiting, trying to find rim protectors. And, you know, Andre – Andre's probably got the best NBA. Uh, if you were to do the NBA combined with our players and a lot of getting to the NBA and that is met metrics and, and the analytics of, you know, size, length, arm length, vertical, broad jump, all that kind of stuff. The tools, yeah. Yeah. Andre's probably the closest NBA player we have. Now everybody's going to say, well, Trey Townsend. Yeah, he's got a chance. But just from the metrics of it, Andre is. And if you watch Andre in a workout, you know, I, I watch him work out even now with not being able to use his left shoulder. And I still, God, if he could only play, you know, he does so many great things. Uh, he's got to get stronger and, and that's going to, especially in the upper body. And that's, he's not gonna be able to do that to some. So, you know, we've got to, and he understands this, we've got to recruit a rim protector. And if, if Andre comes back a hundred percent and ready to go, then the two of them can fight it out and they'll probably both play, you know, but we, we need, a rim protector. Um, you see out of Baru in like the Milwaukee game and their games where he protects that rim and what that does to our defense in our zone. And that's really not what he's best at. I'd like Baru on the wing or at the nail. Um, <laughs> we had a big discussion. Boy, before. Boy, nobody loves the nail like the Greg Campy show audience. We, we had a big discussion before the show about what the nail is. So, but he, he needs to be in those spots if we're going to be great. Um, sure, he can play a few minutes at the at the hoop next year, but I, I need him at the nail or on the wing next year, and I need a rim protector. And Con Chris Conway has become the best version of Chris Conway, and but he but he can protect at certain times, but he's not an elite rim protector. So getting a guy that can play 15 minutes and just protect that rim, and you know, late game defensive, you know, offense to defensive substitutions and that, and then we need a shooter. You know, we need, we think we've recruited shooters uh, in the, in the Holt twins. There's two guys that are shooting 40 plus percent from the three in junior college. They're two of the top leading scorers in the country in junior college. And I surely hope that they are what we think they are, but we can always recruit another one. And uh, there's a couple of kids out there that we're recruiting really hard that are that, and hopefully we'll get one of them. So that, that's what we're doing recruiting once. Just kind of a follow-up camp on what you talked about right there because it was weird to hear you say it, even though that is the case. You said, I'll worry about next year when we get to next year. And that that you talk about antithesis. That's that, that's the antithesis of how of how you used to be. Well, we we built, 
you know, obviously in 40 years we build a program and it was built on player development and growth and just can't do that anymore. I, I've said over and over again, Chris Conway is the dying, the dinosaur, the dying breeder. To see a Chris Conway again, I, I hope it happens. You know, Cooper Craig could be that guy. Uh, but who knows Who knows what's going to happen. He's had some injuries too. But, I mean, Cooper, look, he, he's just gotten better and better. And then the injuries this year have derailed him. I, I just can't get over the amount of injuries that we've seen in the last six, seven years. It's just at some point it's got to end for us. I mean, we went into the game Saturday and honest to God, at 10 o'clock in the morning Saturday, I had no idea who was going to play. I mean, I was told that Rocket wasn't going to play. I was told Blake's not going to play. And I was told Tone Hunter's not going to play. Now, the funny story is, uh, you know, we get to the game and Smitty, before the game, I, I look at him and I go, our Blake and Evan, Evan Solomon is a walk on has been injured. And I said, are Blake and Evan in the scorebook? And he goes, no. And I go, go put them in. And he looked at me like, you know, I got three eyes. Why would we do that? <laughs> well, because we were down to eight players, I thought. And what happens if there's a flagrant foul and two of our players jump off the bench and, you know, and now we got to finish with four guys. We've got to be prepared. At least if they're in the scorebook, then I can tell Blake, go get dressed and you're going to stand at the top of the key. You know, don't run or move, but you're going to stand out there. So we got five guys and we could at least look like we're playing defense, right? And so we're thinking about that with four games to go in a season, we got a chance to win a championship. That's the injury thing has just been crazy. It's been that way the last three to six years, but this year it's not as, you know, you look at it and ha ha ha. Right. But we're, last year it was, we're crying over. I mean, Blake is in a boot or uh, Trey Townsend was in a boot the whole month of February, never practiced once, took the boot off, played in the games, went back in the boot, never practiced. Blake Lanton was supposed to have knee surgery in the middle of February and didn't have it because he loved Jalen more and he wanted Jalen to have a chance. And, uh, you know, this year we're, it's the same stuff. It's just that we're so deep. We're not seeing, I mean, Osei Price came off the bench and started a game who would have guessed Osei Price is going to start a game. And then he takes our first four shots and ends up with 14 points. And, and I, love, I love that, by the way. I loved it. Yeah. That's Did why you? we're winning. Of course I love it. We made them and we're winning. <laughs> Absolutely. But I mean, it's not ideal, yeah. um, but I got off subject like normal, you know, the, the, basically our depth and who knows what we're going to have next year. Who knows where people are going to go and where they're going to end up. And we just got worried about this year. We, we got a chance for a special, special finish to this season. That's our whole focus. The rest of it is we'll worry about that in April. All right. More questions with the hashtag ask can't be on Twitter. Still time to get involved if you want. Uh, Map from the Horizon Roundtable. Uh, this is a good one, Cam. It says, when you shake a coach like Crenshaw's hand after a game like Saturday's, what do you say? You're not you're not trying to show him up, obviously. They know that. You've known Matt since his playing days as a godfather of college basketball. What, what can you offer him in that moment? Well, and again, I don't know if people want me saying stuff like this, but I pulled him aside at halftime. And I said to him, I go, Matt, I go, honestly, I don't want you to get back in the game, but I hope you do. I said, but you got to understand, I only got nine guys and there's going to be players out there. I go, you know, I'll, I'll do some stuff. We'll try and walk it up the floor and we'll do things. But that's the last thing I want to do, especially a, a team that's struggling like they're struggling. And he understands and he thanked me for that. And after the game, you know, I just shook his hand and I, I, I told him, I go, times will get better. Just stick with it. And he just, he, you know, who wants to hear anything at that point when, right. when you're struggling? I mean, they lost to Detroit on Wednesday night and, and that, that had to be a devastating loss for him. You know, there, there was a team that was going to lose to Detroit, and you, no one wanted to be it. And, uh, you know, so it, it was – we knew we knew that we were probably in a good position Saturday after that loss that if we came out and uh, applied the gas early in the game that, that we could win, you know, win the thing. And uh, he's got to go back. And right now, if I were in his shoes, I would be doing everything I could to get my team ready. Let's win a tournament game. Let's salvage our season and win a tournament game. And and I'm sure that's Matt's a great coach and he was a great player. The last time IUPUI went to the NCAA tournament, he was their star guard. And uh, he's in a bad, tough situation and he'll survive it. And I think he'll do fine. Uh, Gary McCarrick, good to see Gary back here in the full with the hashtag Ask Campy. Scheduling questions, Cam. 
Uh, thankfully, the Big Ten State at 20 league games, we keep looking to schedule games with them. What about other major conferences? Uh, and also MSU game at LCA, is that still an option? And any word on Michigan State, Oakland contract extensions? Yeah, I'll go to that first. We, we've got one game left on the contract. You know, I did them a, a pretty darn big favor this year. Um, we're working on the date right now. I, I was working with them last on Friday and Thursday of last week. But it's a it's a weird thing because next year is the leap year, and that screws up basketball schedules. I don't know why one day changes everything, but next year we're going to play three league games before Christmas, and unfortunately, one of them is going to be December 18th, and I can't change that date, and that's right in the window of when we play Michigan State. So I'm not going to play Michigan State on the 16th. You know, we did that this year, and. It, played Xavier and, Detroit, and then Detroit and Fort Wayne. I'm not going to do that to my team again. So we're not going to play the 16th. If we do, it's going to be a non-D1, uh, you know, uh, and it'll be the worst non-D1 in America. We'll, we'll win 180 to nothing if we, you know. Um, okay. So You guys know, so there yeah, you go. Yep. Yeah, so you, when that schedule comes out, you'll understand if you see that game. Um, so we play at Cleveland State on the 18th of December. Uh so we're looking at probably the 21st. The problem with the 21st of December is next year with the new football stuff, there's going to be four or five football games on the 21st. There's three scheduled on the 21st and one on Friday night, the 20th, in the new football NCAA format where, the, you know, 12 teams are going to the playoffs. There's going to be eight teams playing. That's the opening weekend. Of it. Yeah. So we got to be careful with that. We surely don't. What if Michigan's got a home game that day? Uh, uh, or Michigan State has a home game that day, and we're scheduled. So we want to stay away from that because we want 20,000 people. We want this to be the jewel game. So we're trying to come up with a date that fits. The other issue for us is the Saturday before is our graduation, and we played that game on graduation today, and Aura does not want me to do that because she wants to be at the game. Right. So, so that wasn't, that wasn't the response I was thinking I was going to so, get from you there. So trust me, we won't be doing it that I respect day. It, no. I respect it. <laughs> when the boss says don't do it, you don't do it. Right. <laughs> um, so, you know, we, we, uh, so, so that game we're working on that and I have not scheduled anything else because that is the most important on the game. And once I get that scheduled, I'll work as far as the buy games right now, we're too good to get buy games. And nobody's going to schedule us right now. Once the season's over, once they see what happens to our roster, then, you know, we get guys in the portal. We, you know, they see that Goki and Lampman are gone and they analyze everything. We'll start getting by games. So we'll do all that stuff. Uh, usually by now I've got it close to being done. And, and this year, not even close. Again, this portal thing affects everything. Uh, Camp, we got a couple of Mike Rogers questions, as a matter of fact. So we'll combine those into one. Uh, Gio says, what do you think of Mike Rogers' moves against IUPUI? The dude was smooth out there. And uh, they also said you seem to have a new folk hero on your roster in Mike Rogers. So, uh, well, you're, you're... I think he's the only 260-pound point guard in the country. So that's probably got something to do with it. Um, you know, Mike is – Mike, uh, he's been sick. He's been hurt. Uh, it's been a struggle for him all year. It's been a struggle weight wise for him. You know, he's, he's, he's battling that and the injury and, and being able to practice. And I mean, he's probably practiced 10 times since, since December 30th or 15th or something like that. Um, it's one thing after another. And those things have, it's like Andre, those things happen and you got to overcome them. And, and he is battling really hard to do it. Um, and he's gotten behind some, obviously some players. We, we brought Mike here expecting him to play. I mean, he's a talented player. Um, he, he shoots it better than I thought he shot it. Uh, he's, he's shown some signs of some stuff. He struggled early to pick up the zone, and uh, the injuries have hurt that too. Um, so I'm happy that he got in. He's happy he got in, and he showed what he can do. I mean, he, he did turn it over once or twice, but he's a little nervous. But he, I mean, he. The crossover is nice. It, it is, and he finishes pretty good, and. In dribble drive, one of the reasons we recruited him is because he's like a tailback. You know, now he's like a fullback, and and he can get to the rim. Yeah. And in the dribble drive, you want guys that can do that. So he's he's a commodity for us. Um, so I mean, if if you know Blake and Tone don't come back, there's a chance you're going to see Mike Rogers. You know, against Robert Morris on Thursday and against 
Um, all right, say it on Saturday and maybe in the Detroit game if we've got to rest Tone and, and rest Blake for the for the tournament because the tournament's the most important thing. And so if they if Blake and, and Tone can't play, we're not going to throw them out there like, you know, I, I, I pushed the envelope at Fort Wayne. We had to win that game, and I pushed the envelope. And we're not going to do that now. We're, we've got, you know, we're guaranteed a home, a buy in a home game. And there's no difference between, in the tournament, there's no difference between our opponent if we're third, second, fourth, or first. If we're going to play somebody really good because there's nine really good teams in this league. So we're going to play somebody really good in the first round. So I'm not going to push that. If we've got a chance to get the ring, obviously we're going after the ring. But I'm not going to put where one Blake or Tone could miss the tournament for two and the conference regular season. All right, last one here from our guy, Mr. Kennedy. Jimmy Kennedy says, as reflect on the season with three games to go, how would you describe the season based on your expectations going in? Well, I would say that anybody that was at the Fort Wayne game in uh, on December 2nd would have walked away from that game saying Fort Wayne's going to win the league and Oakland's going to struggle to be in the top five. Yep. I would say that any <laughs> yep. I would say that anybody that was at the first exhibition game that walked away watching us lose to a division two school in an ex exhibition game, I would say first of all, you don't understand exhibition games if you felt that we weren't going to be any good. But I could see where you might think that because normally in exhibition games, you know, you're supposed to win by thirty and that but we played that game without Lampman. We played that game against a very, very good team that we knew would be good. And uh, we played it without any offense. We just, we weren't going to show Ohio State anything. We weren't going to do anything. And, and it turned out that way. But I think most people that walked out of that building that night thought, oh, my God, it's going to be a long year. And I think most people that walked out of the Fort Wayne game, even though we had just beaten Xavier. There's a lot of people being honest around yeah. here right now. You know? right. But think <laughs> about think about people said that after the Fort Wayne game. We just beat Xavier on Monday night at Xavier. And yet we walked out of that game thinking, oh, my God, that we're not very good. Right. And it's just the maturation of this team. It's been to me has been as much as fun as any co team I've coached. And we've grown, man. We've really grown as a team. And we're, we're three wins away from winning a conference championship. All right, let's take our final break. When we come back, we'll, we'll talk about the next steps in that pursuit coming up next week. And uh, again, as you talked about as well, uh, some ticket information to discuss and everything like that as far as the postseason goes. So we'll take our final break, come back, and wrap it up. It's the Greg Campy Show, live from RJ's Pub in Rochester.
live at RJ's Pub in Rochester Hills. He's Coach Greg Campy. My name is Neil Rule. Happy to have you with us. And uh, during the break there, Camp, you just told me Rocco Watts does have class on Monday night, so he will not be able to come out. But I, I would advise the people this. Uh, the Golden Grizzlies podcast page, uh, episode 145, I had a conversation with Rocco Watts earlier this season. So you can go He's there. He's a good interview, right? He is a very, very good interview. We talked a lot about his journey and everything like that. Episode number 145 at the Bear in Mind podcast, mm-hmm. iTunes, SoundCloud, uh, wherever you get your podcast in that. Uh, so go ahead and give that a listen if you want. But Camp, uh, certainly tomorrow, uh, excuse me, check that on Wednesday. Uh, we will leave and go to Pittsburgh for a Thursday night game against Robert Morris. But before we do that, Camp, you've alluded to this. Uh, we, we have clinched at least a top four seed in the horizon, top three seed, as a matter right. of fact. So that, in fact, guarantees a home game next Thursday in the Horizon League tournament. So uh, that is out there as well. T- tickets, information, all that kind of stuff. How does that work? Well, we've, we're playing Thursday night at 7 o'clock, the opponent to be determined based on – you know, the first round games that'll be on Tuesday night. Uh, we, you know, the only, the only sh- assurance of who you're playing is the four or five game and we will not be in the four or five game. And we'll be guaranteed a top two spot. And so uh, we can win the last three. We're a top two. If we win all three uh, and green Bay wins all four of theirs, then the number one seed will be determined based on, who finishes ahead of who, if Northern Kentucky finishes ahead of Cleveland state will be the number one seed. And if Cleveland state finishes ahead of Northern Kentucky then green Bay would be the number one seed. So that's if both teams win out. Uh, my guess is based on just this league and how things go is that's probably not going to happen. Uh, winning out for each team is not going to be easy. Yeah, but if we can just get one of the three, we're in the top two. And then if we get all three, you know, there's a good chance we could be the, you know, if we get all three, we, we, we definitely at least tie for the championship. Right. And if we get all three, we could win it outright. We could tie for it. We could still be the number one seed or we could be the number two seed. So it's, it's just a little bit too early to predict that, but it's not too early to understand that we're playing at home Thursday, 7 PM. And we need people there, man. we, this group of kids deserves you guys, and we need it because this is it'll be the, the most important game of the year. Thursday, March 7th, everybody, at the at the Oakland University Credit Union Arena. So roll on out to that. We do know that for a fact. March Madness, it's everybody. Kind of, it's kind of nice to know that. And that this <laughs> was still three games to go in the season. It's a, it's a good feeling. I didn't think – there were many times this year I didn't think we'd be feeling that this early. So it's good. Don't forget we were one and two. Right, and we're now 13 and four. So you've got to give this group a lot of credit. Oh, absolutely. And, and regular ticket prices, every, everything is the same. So make sure you guys come on out. That is March Madness. That is why we do all of that. All right, Camp, uh, road game at Robert Morris. And, and look, um, we kind of know what we're walking into right here. That It's going to be a slugfest. You know that. I know that. Players know that. They're, okay. fight, they're fighting for a home court yeah. in, the, in the quarterfinal round, right? They're, they're ninth. If they get to eighth, I think they're two games out of eighth. If they get to eighth, uh, and the team they're two games behind plays three road games, so they're thinking if they they you know they win out, they're going to get a home game. And uh, it's hard to play at Robert Morris. I don't know why we've not. It's 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 one of the best arenas in the league. Um, they don't draw extremely well right now. They I think they used to before they got in our league, but they were at the top of their old league, so that's why they drew well. Um, and I think everybody drew well pre, pre, pre pandemic, you know, I, I just think that that's changed everything and hopefully we'll get back. Um, but it's a tough place for us to play. We lost there last year during the COVID year. We played two there in split. Um, you know, the, the two years ago, Jamal Kane's, uh, year, we, we lost a really, a really, uh, or no, we won there that, that year. We won there that year. It was last year. We lost the tough one. We just got beat by Youngstown and went there. So it's been a tough place to play. Uh, you know, we've got to do everything we can to be one point ahead. We can't worry about anything except Thursday night, the grind and, and prepare like they prepare and, and do everything that we've done the last few weeks and then find a way to be one point ahead. It's over and come home uh, with a chance to, 
play two home games to win a championship. No, absolutely. And then Wright State, obviously, on Sunday as well. Note that Sunday uh, for the Wright State game. And, and Cam, you know, we haven't really talked a lot about that. I know you're just kind of game by game by game, but I think there's a lot on the line with that Wright State game, just in the in the fact of of what it represents, what what a what a loss would mean for Wright State too. Because you've talked about this camp, and you you held firm with this because the data backs you up. If you're going on the road for the Horizon League tournament, you're going to have some problems. That's just the way that it is, and, and that's what it shows. Since we've gone to this format, there's only been one team, one road win in the quarterfinals, and that was Wright State lost at home when they had a 25-point lead with five minutes to go. Oh, it does happen to other teams. Really? Yeah. I was told it doesn't. They had a tw- just over. Right? They had a 25-point lead against Milwaukee, and, uh, and, that was, and that was a great team. I mean, that was a tremendous Wright State team, and, the, and that's the only loss in the quarterfinals that a home team's had since we've gone to this format. So, you know, it, it's – and Wright State's playing to be in the top four. It's, it's going to – and we just held – one of the top two, three scoring teams in the country to 60 points in their gym. I think, I think they're going to come here, you know, kind of like we went to Fort Wayne, kind of the same situation, but reversed. And we'll be in Fort Wayne shoes and there'll be, and it, and we could be playing. And we'll, we, even if we lose Thursday, we're still playing for first place. Right. So uh, yeah, it's that, that game's going to be a war. I mean, I, we've beaten three times in a row after having lost to them six of seven or something like that. So, you know, that that's, that is a built in every year, hardest game of the year type scenario. And I don't even want to think about it right now. I'll be, able to, I know. I'll be talking about it and I shouldn't be, we got to worry about Thursday. No, I, absolutely. And, and it is, as you talked about it, Robert Morris, it's pretty cool. The, the colonials, the sections of the seats are shaped like American, they're colored like American flags. It's pretty cool. It, I think it's, I mean, if you've ever been to Northern Kentucky, you know they have the biggest time arena in the in the league. But I think uh, Robert Morris has the coolest arena, and it's new, and it's you know it's more fitting to a school their size and our size and, and that, and it's it's really cool place to play. All right, Cam. Final two minutes here of the show. How do you keep this train rolling? I don't. The players do. How do the you players know, keep this train rolling? They they stay focused and they keep out the outside noise out. They don't listen to this radio show. They don't listen to me talking about Wright State on Sunday. They they just stay focused on, you know, we've got a job to do Thursday night, and when it's over, we got to be one point ahead. And how we play means nothing. You know, we can, it is the learning is over, right? The learning is over. Uh, we screwed up. We screwed up uh, the final six seconds of the first half the other day and I wasn't very happy about it. I didn't say a word to them in the locker room at halftime about it because it's it's if it had been three weeks ago I would have gone nuts on them over it. But as you as you say the hay's in the barn or the horses are out or whatever. Well it depends say, on if, if something yeah. bad's happening the horses are out of the barn. If something good happened the hay is in the barn. Okay, so the hay's in the barn right now yeah. and, and as their coach, they're going to tune me out if I start screaming and yelling at them about, you know, getting better right now. It isn't about getting better now. It's about maintaining, keeping focused, maintaining, keeping the outside noise out and understanding everything that they've done to get us to this position is on them. And it's on them now to bring it home. Absolutely. Well, let's uh, let's bring the show home, Camp. Appreciate your time. As always, big thank you to everybody here in the crowd at RJ's Pub. We'll be back at it every single Monday, Thursday night, as we talk about 7 o'clock, Robert Morris. And uh, we'll be there for that. So for the Coach Greg Campy and Andre Polk, my name is Neil Rule. Thanks for listening to the Greg Campy Show live from RJ's Pub in Rochester Hills. Well, see you later.